While searching in the loft for some charging cables, I came across something of an old relic in the sort of router and small business gateway department. So this thing is a Multitech Systems root finder RF 550 VPN. And certainly right from the start, based on the sort of beige plastic appearance, you can probably tell that this is of a certain age and that's around about the 2002 period. So if we just take a look at the ports in the back here, it has a 5 volt 2 amp power input which is there and then a WAN port, a serial port for a dial up modem as backup and then 410-100 LAN ports. So this thing is basically designed to be a small business router so you know, as you connect your computers and devices onto the LAN ports there and then connect your cable or DSL modem to the WAN port there and then just have a dial-up modem on another line as failover. And certainly based on the fact this does have a serial port for a dial-up modem as backup, does also sort of entertain the fact that this is not particularly modern and certainly the plastic has kind of gone a sort of stereotypical colour of the sort of the sort of beige colour that white equipment of the time went. So first things first, let's take a look inside the thing. So getting inside it is relatively simple, there are just four screws on the back and then there are these little mounting things for mounting it on sort of a wall or vertical surface, so like that. Once the screws are removed, it very the lid just very simply comes off because the screws uh, go through the metal tray and into some plastic supports there. Now there's a huge sort of matrix of LED uh, sort of tunnels to carry the light to, to carry the light to the numerous indicators on the surface. So you can see that for each of the LAN ports here, we've got 10, 100 link activity and so on. There's the indicator lights for the serial port, so if you've got a modem connected, and then obviously the WAN port and power. Now this does have quite a few ventilation holes on it and it does actually get reasonably warm actually. So just so now if we just take a look at the main board here. Now I have actually sort of labelled a picture of this, so I'll just set this up right now, but Primarily, there is a 50 megahertz CPU. There is sort of logic boards, 64 megabits of memory times two, eight megabits of storage, I believe. Then a serial controller, 10100 port controller, and a sort of LAN controller as well, I think. So it is very much sort of as you would expect a router to be. But the main so a chip here is the Samsung CPU there, which runs up to 50 megahertz and is the and is sort of certainly based on the data sheet intended for use in applications like this. In terms of the underside of the board, there is not really very much beside a few resistors and capacitors there. So that's it, pretty much there's also a reset button there and also sort of a pin out for a parallel port but there isn't actually space on the back of this for that and it is mounted on quite a quite a really sort of rigid metal base which you don't really get on modern products now it does give the unit quite a good weight so now taking it apart it's time to log into the web interface of it and have to show you around a bit so now once we have logged on to the router's interface, we get this page up. Now, the reason it's so small is not because I've zoomed out at all, but because that's the size the website's set to display at. And of course at this time, so it says they're copyright 2002, people's screen resolutions would have been 640 by 480 or maybe 800 by 600. So this web page size is completely understandable. However, to make it slightly easier for you to view, I'm going to enlarge it to 300%, for which it still fits quite well onto my screen here. So you can see it looks 
not too different from your garden variety home route of today with device information, status, setup, advanced settings and system tools alongside a reasonably rudimentary help uh, option there. So if I just go through the various menus here, so if I just choose device information, so you can see we've got the IP address of the device which is obviously 192.168.0.55 and then it's private and public MAC address. So then if we go into device status here, now this can take a bit of time to load because obviously this thing is probably not all that modern and we can see here the various different sort of connections and it does seem to have a bit of interactivity which might be why it took a little bit of time to load that. And you can see you've got the IP address and MAC address of this computer which it's connected to. If we go through the setup wizard you can set it up using a wizard so in the IP settings of the device, the ISP settings and so on. Now I've tried to set this up in a whole lot of different ways but for some reason the WAM port doesn't seem to be working and actually there's the uh, modem fallback option so trigger on demand manually and the ability to set up different modem types there. Advanced settings just as stuff like virtual server routing filter settings again IP filters it's, it, it's very sort of rudimentary but then course at the time you wouldn't need perhaps the feature set that you'd need today um, system diagnostics there again but it, the uh, menu system is quite basic but the interesting thing is it does take it a reasonable amount of time to actually load certain things and you can see like the actual buttons appearing sort of one by one which is quite sort of interesting quite nostalgic as well just how sort of everything appears but um yeah so unfortunately if I just take the modem out from or the router out from underneath the desk and to show you so we can see that the LAN LEDs are on there but the WAN LED link LEDs on now despite the fact there's no WAN cable connected and sometimes with a cable connected it shows just the link LED sometimes it shows all three of them but one thing's for sure it does not seem to be establishing a 10 100 link to the modem that I connected to which means at the moment is basically just a network switch to me a network switch with a rather sort of nostalgic and slow and slightly sort of crummy interface. I mean in terms of ISP settings it does have a few there but I mean I've tried all of them in a whole lot of different ways and it just doesn't seem to work unfortunately which is kind of sucks. So um, I think. I'm pretty sure this does have a uh, some sort of yeah URL filter option there so you can block URLs and strings but it's certainly not a fully fledged web filtering appliance that's for sure and certainly if it was running full web filtering stuff it would probably need a more powerful CPU in order to get anything like reasonable throughput today. So I hope you've enjoyed this look at the rather old root finder network appliance kinda sad that I can't get it to establish a connection through the WAM port with a modem or another device. The other device, say I've got it connected to a, I've connected it to switches and routers, the activity and link LEDs just don't appear. It's almost as if the WAN port is completely dead on the device. But um thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.